I want it to feel like a celebration this week for myself, for Joanne, for the rest of our friends and family that have not just supported me along the way, but also been like a part of the process for me. It's a part of their lives, your life coming out here to to film, to cheer me on, traveling across the country. Like, I want it to be like the big payoff for all of us, you know? It's something that we've all been at least slightly invested in for the last decade, and so it'd be cool to go out with a bang and just have everybody have a really good time and have some very fond memories of what this whole thing has been for us. For the fans as well, like anybody that has cheered for me for 10 years, I want them to feel like it's a fun way to close it out and move into the next chapter. That's all I got, man. It is the beginning of the end. The fittest athletes in the world have descended on Madison, Wisconsin for one last ride. Welcome to the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games, and for the final time, the fittest on earth will be crowned at the Alliant Energy Center. Little recovery after day one of the CrossFit Games. It was a decently difficult day physically. Thankfully and truthfully, I don't feel super rocked. I heard some whispers in the, the warm-up area and even uh, somebody in particular said, dude, how do your calves and quads feel? And I like did a little test. And I said, do you want me to tell you the truth? And they were like, yeah, truth. And I was like, not that bad. And they were like, wow, mine hurt, killing me. And uh, so I'm glad that in comparison to a couple other Fellas, I'm not feeling terrible yet. I know we still have three full days of competition, so I'm sure it will come at some point. It was a pretty mediocre day for me, performance-wise. And I, I feel okay about it. Like, I could definitely see myself being super bummed if I allowed it, and in the past I would have. But I don't want that to be my experience this weekend, so I'm not going to let it be that. Um, the bike was very difficult. I started off pretty strong and then kind of faded halfway through. I looked down at my watch at one point and my heart rate was 195. It settled down to like 185 for the rest of the last half, which is very high to be sustaining for 20 minutes. I felt like I was gonna throw up after. So that was a really hard effort. And I think I took like 25th maybe, which is not fantastic. The second event, pig flip, gymnastics, wall balls, not like my jam. I think you could see 100 toe to bar and 50 chest to bar in there and say that would be something that I should do well on, but the pig is just tough for me, a big, heavy, like brute strength implement, and that's not the type of athlete that I am. I can be pretty efficient when I move weight, and I figured out a way to make the pig a little bit more efficient but still just not enough to be able to hang with the big dogs on that one. And I feel like I took like 15th or something like that. And then the evening event, the final one of the day, which should have been or could have been an event that I would do very well on in uh, at any point in time, ended up being one that I swung for the fences took a chance for potentially an event win and it didn't pan out in my favor and I am okay with that. I think I either was gonna take a chance and maybe win or play it conservative and finish in like fifth and I took a chance, lost my rhythm on the pullovers a little bit and then messed up a couple times on the uh, 360 spin on the box and ended up finishing 12th instead of, like I said, a conservative, probably like fifth or sixth, or if I had gotten those other pullovers and not fell on the 360, who knows, maybe I could have finished in the top three at least. Um, 
but I, I don't have any regrets. I would have, I, this weekend, because I want to have some epic moments and memories, I'd rather take a chance and have a 50-50 chance of it paying off in that regard or not than just playing it safe and like coasting through. Back home in Miami, post-2023 CrossFit Games, I said to Joanne on Monday night when we had finally gotten home and were laying in bed that it almost felt like it was a dream, as if it was possible that we had fallen asleep. I dreamt the entirety of being in Madison for the CrossFit Games and then woke up the next day and I don't know, it was it just like while you're in it at the games, it feels like it's dragging on and there's a lot of anticipation and waiting around and thoughts and pressure. But then when it's over, it really always feels like it flew by. While we were out there in Madison, we had the opportunity to do a chat before the game started and a day one recap. The way the games go, it didn't make sense for us to squeeze in recaps for days two, three, and four because we were prioritizing rest and recovery. So we're gonna walk back through days two, three, and four of the games, talk about each of the events, and then kind of do an overall synopsis at the end. Here we go, we'll dive in, starting with day number two. Event one on Friday morning was the Alpaca Redo. Last year we did this event, a version of it that didn't have any legless rope climbs and the majority of the workout was kettlebell clean and jerks and the sled push. I felt like I did okay on this event. It really, honestly, majority of it came down to that final sled push. Leading up to that, I think I had managed the legless rope climbs relatively well. I got to the point where I was almost failing, but never quite reached failure, which I think means that you played your cards right there. Kettlebell clean and jerks, I did in sets of four, felt pretty smooth throughout, and felt like I had enough energy to like catch people there, finish the eight and four, load the kettlebells up, and was gonna try to sprint across the line, and just got slammed into a wall with how heavy the kettlebells were, or the sled was with all six kettlebells in it. I think the total weight on that was like 520 or 540 pounds. It took me probably like three or four minutes it felt like to get that final like 50 foot section of the sled push done and I feel like I lost a couple spots there but all in all I put a lot of effort into that workout executed relatively well wasn't an amazing placement I think it was like middle of the pack 15th or something and uh, I didn't make any mistakes so nothing to have any regrets about on that one event number five which was the second event of Friday was ski bag that was an event jumping all the way to the end of it where this happens every now and then I thought that I had executed relatively well and it was gonna be a decent finish on the leaderboard like I felt good about my performance and then got back into the warm-up area was cooling down pulled up the leaderboard and took 26 which was tied for my worst finish of the weekend with the bike event and I was like huh that's so weird. I felt like I did a good enough job on that, but I guess everybody else just did better. My intention for the workout that I discussed with Max ahead of time was to just be tough and do each set of the sandbag squats unbroken. I knew it was gonna get difficult toward the end. It would feel like a grind, but it wasn't a movement where you were really gonna like reach failure. And it was just a matter of like convincing yourself that you could squat down and stand up one more time as much as your legs were gonna be on fire. And I did that on both sets, the 30 and the 20, so I was proud of that effort. Although at the end of each of those sets, probably the last five reps of each, uh, my legs were on fire, specifically my left side glute and VMO because the sandbag was on the right side. And if you did a normal squat, you'd be way off balance. So you kinda had to lean a little bit towards the opposite leg and my, again, glutes on my left side and my left quad were like automatically so I ran to the ice baths after to try to negate a little bit of that and I think it worked. 
it just wasn't my best one of the weekend, even though I did what I thought I could have. So, final event of Friday evening, which would have been event number six, was Helena, which ended up being my best finish of the weekend, and thank God for that, because it really reminded me of why I love to compete. Thus far, I hadn't had any like really exciting moments, and even though I'd connected with the crowd and was making it a good experience overall, a competitively successful finish is such a rush that it kind of leaves you on a high, and that was my first taste of that this weekend, and it just felt really good. It like got me fired up, made me feel confident in myself, made me feel excited that I had a, a memorable moment like that for myself and for the crowd. So that was good. Before our heat took the floor, Uldis, who had won the heat prior, walked off and said, I wish I would have run faster. And immediately that made my decision that I was gonna try to run fast. Originally I was thinking it's like a 90% effort, like don't lead the pack, but also don't fall too far behind. I ended up changing my decision in that moment that I was gonna run hard from the beginning and just try to hang on, and I think it kind of worked. I was basically right in line with Lazar and Will Morad the whole time, getting to the final dumbbell snatches. I tried to send those into hyperspeed because I knew it was the final set, and I thought maybe I could make up ground on one of them. I ended up taking fourth overall on that one, which, again, happened to be my best finish of the weekend. It was third in that heat, but Jeff Adler in the final heat had passed us all, and, uh, I felt pretty good about that. I think going into Saturday, they made cuts from 40 down to 30. At that point, I was somewhere around 15th, so I was safe from that cut. And Saturday evening, they would cut the field down by another 10 athletes from 30 to 20. So I knew that I wanted to stay in that top 20 to make the cut, and every event on Saturday would dictate whether or not that would be the case. We started Saturday morning with the 5K run, which I felt kind of neutral about. Like I know I'm not the fastest long distance guy in our field, but I always feel pretty comfortable running. I knew I wasn't gonna take last and I knew I wasn't gonna win. So it was a matter of just like hanging somewhere in the middle and maybe being able to make up some ground if I paced it well. I thought that could happen to some people if they either went out way too hot, they could really fade toward the back end of a three mile test or if you pace it a little too slowly, it could be hard to catch up. I think I was erring on the side of the ladder there where I started off slow-ish. I think probably was in the like 15th place range out of 30 guys and did have enough energy, which I was doubting along the way, but by the time we got to probably the final thousand meters, I could tell that I had enough energy to kick, push a little harder. I passed Luke Parker, Nick Matthew, and just as we entered the stadium for the final sprint down the field, I passed Justin Medeiros and thought that I had got him, but he saved a little bit and hit the boosters when we had like I don't know 50 feet left until the finish, and he sprinted back by me, which was a little frustrating. So I ended up taking 16th as opposed to 15th on that, which was just about what I expected. And I felt okay about that performance. It actually was not a true 5K, which everybody's aware of at this point. I think it was like a 4.6 kilometer run, 2.8-ish miles. And my total time, I wanna say, was just under 17 minutes, or like right around 17. So it was like a just over six minute per mile pace for the whole thing. I actually felt okay, like I wasn't absolutely rocked after it. Legs felt okay somehow, got in the ice bath again just to try to keep them fresh. When they announced the interval workout, I actually felt like it could have been a good one for me. I'm decent at being able to move and push the pace fast on burpees. Probably not the strongest rower of the field, not being one of the bigger bodies but I didn't know that that was gonna be a significant enough portion of that workout that it would impact me majorly. So I think that was just about like rep speed and being able to push the pace from the beginning, a little bit of time to recover and do it again. I had figured out a, a technique where I came off the box jump overs first and got to the rower, 
a little bit more fatigued there than I had expected or hoped to be. So that by the time we got to the first set of burpee box jump overs, my pace was a little slower and I think everybody had caught up to me there. I got across the line and actually ended up jumping over my nameplate because I was a little disoriented. It was like, get over the box. The finish line was immediately in front of us where I thought it would have been a little further. So I sprinted and by the time I realized I was already on the finish line, had too much momentum and just had to clear my nameplate, uh, which wasted a little bit of energy, but hopefully made somebody chuckle in the stands. And then during that recovery time, I could feel that I was like heart rate really high, breathing heavy, legs burning. That was a surprise to me how much my legs were burning on just the regular box jump overs. Because I think most of the time you went from the row to those. And I could feel myself kind of, again, settling in. Not settling in effort-wise, but just like falling into the middle of the pack as we progressed down the field for the second part. Ran to the final box, did those box jump overs as quickly as I could, got across the finish line, and I think ended up, again, taking like a middle of the pack score on that one. Which I don't like admitting or saying, you know, it doesn't feel good to be a middle of the pack athlete. I don't think anybody wants to be average. I would love to be above average and I want to have awesome finishes. And I don't know what it was that contributed to a lot of those like very average finishes. I was saying actually at some point to Max over the weekend that I don't know if it's a me thing and everybody else thing or a tests thing or a combination of all three. Is it me that I'm just not as good as I used to be and can't really hang with the top guys? Is it that the top guys have just gotten so much better? Or is it that the tests are not really in my favor? And again, I hate to make excuses, so I'm not trying to do that, but just like in my mind, trying to justify why I'm sitting in 15th overall, whereas in years past, I've been pushing for the top spot at the games. And I do think it's like some combo of those three things, which is hard to come to terms with, that you're not as good as you once were. I think there's a country song that says something about that. I don't know who sings it. I'm not as good as I once was. I got a few years on me now. Anyway, that was kind of a, a sentiment that was weighing on me a little bit throughout the weekend, but because I had set the intention of enjoying the experience, I was able to kind of overshadow that with all the other positive interactions with the crowd and my friends and family and the fans and other athletes. So it didn't weigh down, weigh me down as heavily as it could have if I didn't have all that other good stuff to balance it out. Final event of Saturday, event number nine of the competition was the Olympic total. We had two attempts to establish a one rep max snatch, rolled right into two attempts to establish a one rep max clean and jerk. Interesting format, two attempts is not many, so you kind of have to pick your numbers accordingly. You want to hit a lift that you're almost guaranteed that you're going to make, but is heavy enough that it's going to give you a decent score. And then your second one, you either take another like risky attempt, but still you feel pretty comfortable with, like you're not going to probably PR anything out on that scenario. Being eight events into the games, I was pretty fatigued generally and my legs were also feeling a little tired so I didn't know how much oomph I was going to have to lift heavy. Depending on where you are on the floor and what the environment is, when you go down to get your hands on the bar and set your body, you look up before you start your lift and if you haven't pre-selected a spot to look and even if you have sometimes, it can be very disorienting to see so much going on. And that was exactly what happened to me on my first attempt at 260 on the snatch. I set my feet, my body, my hands, and I looked up and started pulling and like happened to make eye contact with Brent Fikowski's judge who was like two rows in front of me. And I didn't want that to be the case. So I like looked right as I'm pulling, saw something else, looked up, saw the crowd, looked down. And so my gaze was like bouncing all over the place as I was snatching and it was just very disorienting. And so I missed my first attempt. Ironically, I had said to Max that I'm not the kind of guy that can take 80, 90% of my max, miss it, and then immediately pick it back up and hit it again. But I felt like I needed to try in that moment because we had that 20 second window. So I missed, 
had probably another 10 seconds to reset. I picked a spot looking at, there was a CrossFit Games logo on Brent's name plate, which was a row in front of me. So I looked right at the CrossFit Games logo, locked my eyes in there, hit the lift at 260, right at the buzzer, did one of these, felt like that was a relief to have gotten that in. And as they went around and everybody else took their snatches, I was deciding what my second attempt was gonna be. I kinda knew in my heart from the very beginning that I was gonna try 275 no matter what. At semifinals, my final lift was 270, and I wrote an Instagram post after that saying that I wish I had taken a bit more of a chance because of how easy that felt, and I hope at the games I have an opportunity to do so. This was my opportunity, so I loaded 275 on the bar, knew it was gonna kinda be a Hail Mary, especially having missed my first attempt at 260, but I'm so grateful that I did because I've always dreamt about snatching 275 or more at the CrossFit Games, and I've never done it. Last chance I get, stick 275. I don't know if stick it is the right word. It was a little funny, but made the lift at 275 and was so fired up to have done that in front of the crowd. And yeah, that was maybe the most excited that I got for any event all weekend. Even more so than finishing fourth in Helena. I don't know, there's just something about lifting in front of the crowd and hitting a big number, which admittedly I turned around after I slammed the bar down at 275 and I was like, I know that's not that heavy relative to what some of these other guys are gonna hit. I think we had a 315, there were a bunch of 290s and stuff, but it felt really good for me. Going into the clean and jerk, Chandler had put the idea of doing a power clean into my mind earlier that day. It would save my legs a little bit, which were already a bit fatigued, and that would probably enable me to be more secure on hitting that jerk. So I hit 315 pretty cleanly on both power clean split jerk. It rolled around, I decided on 330 because that felt like it was right at the threshold of what I'd still be able to power clean. I wanted to attempt that. And I did attempt it. <laughs> I pulled 330, sent my feet out relatively wide, caught it just above parallel, but it pushed me down into a full squat. And in a split second, I kind of had that panic of, Oh man, this was supposed to be a power. I'm in a really weird position, but immediately just made the decision to try to drive out of it, stand it up, reset. I hit the jerk, which I was very excited about. It was a 605 pound total, 275 snatch, 330 clean and jerk. I'm relatively proud of that. My best lifts ever are a 285 snatch and a 350 clean and jerk. So 20 pounds off the clean and jerk, 10 pounds off the snatch, under fatigue, two attempts at the games, I'll take it. Wrapped up Saturday night, nine events into the games in 17th place. So I made the cut going into the final day of competition, which I was excited about because I wanted to be able to complete all of the tests of my final individual CrossFit games. Final day of my final individual CrossFit games, Sunday, started with test number 10, which was muscle up logs. In theory, if you look at that event, you could say, ooh, that's a good one for Noah, which Aaron told me that Evan did. It's got 35 ring muscle ups, right? Noah's really good at those. But I feel like that was such an insignificant part of that workout because almost everybody in the field at this point can do seven unbroken ring muscle ups over and over and over again. And a majority of the time and energy went into moving the sandbags across to the logs and up and over the logs. That was what really held me up. Um, I, again, it, I didn't feel like I made any mistakes on that workout or like that I copped out by taking it easy. I just so happened to move slower than most of the other guys. Even though I was trying as hard as I could to push the pace, it just, by the time I got the sandbag up and over my shoulder and walked to the next one, pace was a little bit slower there. And I think that was energy taxing enough 
that towards the end I needed to take that one second before picking the sandbag up, especially on the 200 pound bag, to ensure that I was gonna get it in the right place on my shoulder and be able to toss it up and over the log, which wasn't necessarily easy for me. Again, no excuse, but being 5'7", and the bottom of the log being 5'5", five five, put the top of the log at probably like close to six feet. And so I had to, I, I figured out on the fly that once I got it up to my shoulder, if I could get this bottom hand like under the bag, I could kind of jump and push it, get it kind of on the log and then push it the rest of the way over with my hands. And that 200 pound bag made me the most nervous in my ability to be able to do that. Thankfully, I was able to get that up and over in one try. But I guess I was wrong. First mistake of the weekend, I got the 200 pound bag up and over. I was so relieved by that, that I jumped over the log and just sprinted to the finish line. And I can't even remember what the noise reaction was from the crowd. I think it was like a cheer that I got the bag over. And then like a, oh, like a collective gasp. And then I heard the announcer say, looks like he left the sandbag behind. And the judge was pointing back at it. And I was like, ah. Oh. We're supposed to carry the sandbag across the finish line. So went back to get it, hit the crowd with one of these, which I said a couple times throughout the weekend, felt silly to try to hype the crowd up when I wasn't winning. But I got like, it, it was a cool interaction every time with the crowd because I feel like we've developed this relationship, the most of the crowd and I, where we like feed off of each other. Like I give them a little, interaction and they kind of give me back some energy that helps me finish the event and also make sure that I'm having fun out there. And so even though I'd made the mistake and actually didn't end up losing myself any spots, um, picked the bag up, ran across the line and finished, took 18th, which was second to last in the heat, um, which I wasn't pumped about, but aside from forgetting the sandbag, made no mistakes, did all the muscle ups unbroken, picked the sandbags up right away, just wasn't my workout. Event number 11 was called like parallel bar pull, something like that. And they brought back the parallel bars. We had to traverse it, turn around, walk back on it, which that was kind of a new element, the turn without coming down that none of us had really practiced before. I felt pretty comfortable with that. Weighted double unders, especially for 30 reps, I felt pretty comfortable with. And then we kind of had the new implement of a platform to put our feet up against and be able to pull a sled across the floor with. I, I was kind of excited about that one. I felt like it wasn't going to hurt very badly. A lot of the workouts this weekend, I felt like were like suffering, like very difficult in the moment. And I would sprint across the finish line, be exhausted and not really have many moments in between while the workout was going on to like let my awareness expand beyond exactly what I was doing in that moment because of how difficult it was. This test I felt like was a little easier in that regard effort wise to where you could kind of be like catching your breath and zooming out to be aware of everything else going on while you were jumping or pulling or walking. At the end, I was kind of in a little mini race with Justin. We both sat down for the sled pull at the same time and unfortunately, my second to last pull, the rope got hooked underneath the plates of the sled that I had pulled down the floor in the first place because there were two sleds that we had. So my rope got hooked underneath the plates of the first sled at the probably most crucial time in the workout. And so I had to like get the rope up and over and then do my final pull, which gave Justin just enough time to like run to the parallel bars and get across, I think two seconds ahead of me. But it is what it is. I think I took ninth or 10th on that one and wasn't too beat up going into whatever the final was gonna be. Final event ever for me individually was thrusters, echo bike, overhead walking lunges. It was, kind of surreal, like a very, very heavy mix of emotions, getting warmed up for and then taking the floor for that event. It's kind of cool. I think one or two other times in my career have I felt as positively emotional as I did waiting in the tunnel to take the floor before that event. 
a little bit nervous for sure because I think that was going to be one of the more painful events of the weekend. But I was so overwhelmed with gratitude, love, joy, all of that. I, I literally, I, this sounds so cheesy and cliche, but I felt like my heart was going to explode before I took the floor because I, I was trying to cultivate all those emotions too. Like I could feel them under the surface and I would close my eyes and breathe deeply and just try to bring them up closer and closer to the surface so that I could go out there and just really feel it all one last time. And so that was pretty cool for me. I was just like beaming with a smile, no matter how the workout was gonna go. I knew that I would cross the finish line and just be surrounded by my best friends and family and the entire CrossFit community one last time. So that was cool and emotional. Um, the workout itself, you wanted to go fast enough on the bike that you didn't fall behind, but not so fast that you were gonna blow up for the rest of all the work. I think I settled in at like between four to 500 watts on the bike for the first 21 calories. Did the first set of thrusters unbroken. Second bike, the plan was to just settle in wherever I could to like recover but not go so slow that you'd lose a ton of ground. I think that ended up being just over 300 watts. I wanted to try to break up the thrusters at 155 in a way that I could get through all 15, finish the final rep, keep the bar overhead, and try to do the last set of lunges unbroken. I got the bar overhead, felt like I was locked into a pretty good overhead position, and was very, very much in my zone, just focusing on my lane and very specifically on the red line that we had to lunge across before getting up on the finish mat. I just had my eyeballs on that the entire time and was encouraging myself every step of the way that I could do one more step. I've done more difficult pieces than that in training. Like I knew in this moment it was more important than those training pieces and so really, really wanted to try to get through that unbroken, which I managed. Felt that same overwhelming sense of emotion. I remember just kind of looking at the crowd with my hand on my heart and feeling all of the love. CrossFit was gracious enough to allow me the opportunity to kind of address the crowd right there and then about that being the final workout of my individual career and talk about what the last decade of competing at the games has meant to me, which was really, really special because I was already in my feels, so it was pretty easy to share all of the things that I was feeling with the crowd, and I was really grateful for that opportunity. I got to go hug and kiss Joanne, my mom, my dad, all of you guys, my best friends, kind of wave goodbye to the crowd one last time, and I actually ended up sneaking into the crowd and sitting with all of them to watch Chandler and the rest of the guys close it out in that final heat. And that was it. That was the 2023 CrossFit Games, my 10th and final time competing individually. As I said, I have no regrets. I would have loved to have finished higher, but I think it was a beautiful closing of what's been an awesome chapter of my life. I'm so grateful for everything that's happened in my life since I started CrossFit in 2010 all the way until now in 2023. I'm actually really, really excited about what the future holds for me in the CrossFit world still. I think a lot of people thought that because this was my last time competing individually that I was done and retiring altogether, which is not the case. 100% confirmed at this point, next year I'll be going team. I think for me, having a renewed sense of hope at being able to win the games is gonna kind of bring a, a similar fuel to my fire in training that I haven't had in a few years. I think once I started to lose the belief that I could win the games individually, training felt a little less purposeful. Now knowing that we definitely have a realistic chance of going out and winning a gold medal as a team I'm fired up to do everything we can to make that a reality. And I think it's going to be awesome. Uh, in addition to being able to win, I think it's going to be an even more special experience for me, the way that I've grown to connect with people, having this not be a solo journey and being able to share the highs and lows with three other people on our team very intimately, I think is going to be very special. And I'm looking forward to it. Want to go play spike ball? Yeah. Let's do it.